Well, Don Brash has been hitting the headlines for championing this new lobby group formed to get rid of so-called Māori privilege. This is the Hobson's Pledge group. It's uh, fronted by the former National ANAC party leader Don Brash. They're intending to pressure politicians into opposing race-based laws and Māori seats in Parliament. But exactly who else is backing this crusade? Our Māori issue correspondent Mihina Rangi Forbes went digging for answers. The Hobson's Pledge website is emblazoned with the saying, He iwi tahi tātou. We are one people, a phrase used by Governor Hobson as he greeted Māori chiefs signing the Treaty of Waitangi, a document which guarantees iwi full, exclusive and undisturbed possessions of their lands, forests and fisheries and a document which gives Māori the same rights and privileges as Pākehā. It's the word privilege that seems to have these Hobson Pledge Trust members up in arms. So what do they see as the single worst example of Māori privilege? Mike McVicker, a Rotorua councillor, answered like this. The worst case would be, I would suggest, the misinterpretation of the Treaty of Waitangi. Former businessman Peter Shirtcliffe honed in on Māori representation. You've got places such as the Auckland uh, councils giving uh, Maori, people of Maori descent preference in relation to the way in which they vote. Another member, author and businessman Andy Oakley, couldn't choose just one. Um, I don't think that's a question I can answer. There's, there's many examples. Andy Oakley lobbied against the commemoration of the New Zealand wars and once described the conflict as sporadic terrorist attacks on our sovereignty. I asked him how Iwi, who fought against the Settlement Act of 1863, which led to the confiscation of more than four million acres of land, could be classed as terrorists. But if there was a law made uh, at that time and was enacted by the government, it, it surely was not breaking any law. Hobson's pledge wants a so-called colourblind New Zealand, but there was one group which featured frequently in spokesperson Don Brash's interviews. A Maori ancestor, Maori, Maori and Maori unelected tribal representatives, Maori, Maori for Maori, Maori. So given the focus on Maori, we wondered what race the members considered themselves to be. Peter Shirtcliffe was happy to answer. Now let me think. Well, first of all, I'm a quarter Scot. I'm a quarter uh, British, and the rest is New Zealand. But Mike McVicker, Mike Butler and Andy Oakley seemed offended by the question, how Pākehā are they? I don't think that, those way, that way at all I couldn't answer that sort of question. It's I don't really see how that is, question is relevant. <laughs> Why do you persist in asking a race-based question? I know that's a question that's asked quite often of Māori. Um, what percentage? Yeah. Um, I would say it should be of no relevance whatsoever. And despite not thinking the question was relevant, Mike Butler went on to challenge exactly how Māori some people really are. Another thing too, if you look at um, what constitutes Māori, you know, you start looking at a percentage of Māori ancestry and you see a lot of people, probably like yourself, who've got a very small amount of Māori ancestry who choose to identify as Māori. Well, that's fine, but it creates a kind of an artificial group. I identify as a human being. So what did the human beings think of Māori inequalities in health, education, life expectancy or incarceration? We are a very simple, single-focused movement relating to the issue of equality in governance and property rights. Other issues are not for us. OK, just wondered, why do you think Māori are overrepresented in the prison system? 51%, only 15% of the population. I have no idea. I, I haven't studied that. We, that. That's not anything to do with Hobson's Pledge, not what we're on about. Māori leaders have called the group out of date, while the Labour Party says Hobson's Pledge is racist. Mo te hōtaka o te ahihei nei ko mihingarangi Forbes ahau.